Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Monday, the 22nd of August. Farmers protest in Indian capital over law on guaranteed prices for crops, other pending demands. Pakistan's ousted PM Imran Khan secures transit bail till August 25 in terror case. And Sri Lanka to provide subsidy to those hit hard by record kerosene price hike. And now for all the details. More than eight months after Indian farmers called off a year-long agitation and the government conceded to several of their demands, hundreds of farmers staged a demonstration once again in capital New Delhi over unfulfilled promises, including a law on guaranteed prices for their crops. Hundreds of Indian farmers wielding banners and flags broke through barriers as they gathered at the famous protest site Jantar Mantar in capital New Delhi to demonstrate on Monday over their pending demands that they said were agreed upon when they suspended their year-long agitation last November against the three contentious farm laws that were revoked by the government. Farmer leaders said their demands include a law on minimum support price MSP, guaranteeing minimum prices for all crops, compensation and jobs for families of farmers who lost their lives during the mass protest last year, and the withdrawal of electricity bill which threatens to cut subsidized power for irrigation. In a memorandum, they also demanded justice for Lakhimpur Khedi incident, in which four farmers were allegedly knocked down by cars driven by workers of ruling Bharati Janata Party or BJP. मांगे जो हमारी बकाया पड़ी थी इंदौलन की वो सभी हैं लखीमपुर खीरी के जो दोषी हैं उनको सजा दिलवाने के लिए हमारी मेन मांग है एमएसपी की गारंटी का कानून बनाया जो वो मेन मांग है और बाकी और हैं किसानों के रिन मुक्ति की जाए वो मेन मांग है वो सब मांगे लेकर जो बाकी इंदौलन की बाकी रह रही हैं जैसे हमारे किसानों के ऊपर मुकदमे लगे हैं वो वापस लेने की मांग है तो आप the security at the New Delhi's borders remained tight throughout the day, causing traffic snarls. Some farmers were also detained at the Ghazipur border to control the crowd in the wake of the one-day protest. And heavy rainfall followed by landslides and flooding in India's northern Himachal Pradesh state over the past three days have killed more than 20 people. Several Indian states are experiencing heavy monsoon rains that have overwhelmed villages, swept away houses and left residents stranded. Heavy rains in the past three days have triggered flash floods, landslides and cloud bursts killing more than 20 people in India's northern Himachal Pradesh. Chief Minister Jairam Thakur visited the worst hit Mandi district where 13 people have died and five persons are feared dead as they went missing after a landslide. He announced relief and compensation for the victims. Amid forecast of more rains, the state's disaster management department has issued a warning for landslides across Himachal Pradesh till August 25. और मुझे इस बात को लेकर के बहुत दुख है कि हिमाचल प्रदेश में इन तीन दिनों में जिन लोगों की जान गई है उनकी संख्या 22 अभी तक हो गई है और जहां मैं आज यहां आया हूं गोहर के साथ में गांव काशन में वहां तो मुझे इस बात को लेकर के दुख है कि एक ही परिवार के प्रधान खेमसिंग के परिवार के आठ लोगों की मृत्यु एक साथ एक ही जगह एक ही घर में हुई है। Several low-lying areas near the banks of River Ganges in eastern Patna city were submerged on Monday after heavy rainfall led to a rise in water levels. The situation caused difficulties for inhabitants near the banks. एकदम अचानक बढ़ा है ये पानी जो है लगभग ये दो दिन में यहाँ तक आया है। पानी जो था बहुत नीचे था। Meanwhile, heavy rains that last Bhopal in central Madhya Pradesh state for the third day on Monday led to waterlogging in parts of the city. The India Meteorological Department has issued a red alert in 39 districts of Madhya Pradesh 
including Bhopal, Ujjain and Jabalpur and advised people to avoid travelling. Well, in the latest of an ongoing power struggle in Pakistan, authorities charged a former Prime Minister Imran Khan under the country's Anti-Terrorism Act, accusing him of threatening police officials and a magistrate. On Monday, Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf Chairman Khan secured a transit bail till August 25th after he filed a pre arrest bail application in the Islamabad High Court to avoid arrest in the terrorism case registered against him on Sunday. The Islamabad High Court on Monday granted Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf PTI Chief Imran Khan a pre arrest bail till August 25th after being booked under terrorism charges. Khan had filed for the bail application to avoid arrest in a terror case filed against him on Sunday night for threatening a female judge and senior police officers at a public rally on Saturday. According to the FIR, Khan had threatened government officials about the alleged police torture of one of his aides, Shahbaz Gil, who faces sedition charges for inciting mutiny in the powerful military. Gill had called on lower and middle ranks of the military to defy orders from the top brass. Earlier in the day, dozens of supporters of former Prime Minister Khan gathered outside his hilltop mansion in capital Islamabad, vowing to prevent his arrest on anti-terrorism accusations, officials of his political party said. The protesters chanted slogans against the government of Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif, who took over after Khan's ouster in a confidence vote in April. देखिए क्लियरली फैशिज्म है और ताकत का इस्तेमाल उस वक्त किया जाता है जब आपके पास दलील खत्म हो जाए इमरान खान वो लीडर है वो एक अवामी लीडर है और उसके पीछे पब्लिक पावर है और वो एक सुनामी की तरह उभर रहा है सुनामी का रास्ता कोई नहीं रोक सकता तो ये ओछे हथकंडे हैं और कुछ दिल है मैं यही कमेंट करूँगी खान हैज बिन पुशिंग फॉर न्यू इलेक्शन इन पाकिस्तान सिंस बिंग आउटेड फ्रॉम पावर He has been delivering fiery speeches at gatherings across the country. His address on Saturday also triggered a ban by Pakistan's electronic media regulator on the live TV broadcast of Khan's speeches, which it described as hate speech against state institutions. Then on Sunday evening, Khan accused the government of going even further to block YouTube temporarily to deny live access to his speech at a political rally. And more on news from Pakistan, Sikh community in Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa held a massive protest on Sunday over abduction and forced conversion of a Sikh girl to Islam. The protesters alleged the victim was abducted at gunpoint, raped and later married off to her abductor with the help of the local administration and the police. Human rights activists say minority communities including the Sikhs, Hindus and Christians have been facing persecution in Pakistan. They accuse that several girls from these communities have been abducted, forcibly converted and married to Muslim men in the past few years, while the authorities have failed to ensure justice. Buner ki intizamiya is me malove se. Buner ki intizamiya ne usse apne zabar dasti darchar karke usse bina bayan halpi liye uska nikah nama karwaya hai usko apne paas rakha hai hume var galate rahe pura din hume var galate rahe. Afghanistan has been reeling from natural disasters this year including a massive earthquake and flash floods that killed hundreds of people. At least 20 people have been killed in flash floods in central Afghanistan in the past 2 days with heavy rain destroying thousands of homes and damaging agricultural land. The Islamic Emirate called on the international community to provide the flood affected people with aid. At least 20 people have been killed in a flash flood in central Afghanistan over the last 48 hours, a disaster management official said on Monday, with heavy rain destroying thousands of homes and damaging agricultural land. The country has been reeling from natural disasters this year, including a drought and a massive earthquake that killed over 1000 people in June. According to State Ministry for Disaster Management more than 165 people died and nearly 300 others were wounded by the floods in over 20 provinces of the country in recent weeks. Unofficial reports put the toll much higher. The Taliban government which took over the country last August has struggled to cope with the disasters and has called for assistance. Taliban government spokesman Zebuhullah Mujahid said in a video message 
posted on social media, we asked the international community, especially Islamic countries and humanitarian organizations, to urgently help the victims. Thousands of acres of agricultural land has been destroyed by the floods. Global humanitarian agencies have provided assistance for months, but have warned that they needed more access and funding to avoid a humanitarian disaster with thousands left homeless and no access to shelter or clean drinking water. And Sri Lanka has decided to provide a direct cash subsidy to low-income families and plantation and fisheries sector that depend on kerosene, power and energy minister Kanchana Vijayasekara said on Monday. The move came a day after a record price hike of kerosene from 87 rupees to 340 rupees per litre. The minister said the price revision was must as it was leading to losses amid the ongoing crisis. Sri Lanka's Power and Energy Minister Kanchana Vijayasekara on Monday said the government has proposed to provide a direct cash subsidy to low-income families and fisheries and plantation sectors that depend on kerosene. The move came a day after state-run Ceylon Petroleum Corporation increased the price of kerosene to a record high from Rs 87 to Rs 340 per litre. Vijayasekara said the price revision was a must as it was leading to losses. Sri Lankans have battled rampant inflation, shortages of food, fuel and medicines for months amid the ongoing economic crisis that also stoked unprecedented mass protests. Earlier on Sunday, Sri Lankan cricketer Sanat Jaiswariya was in India's Gujarat state to promote tourism for his crisis-hit homeland. The time has come to promote tourism now. This is Sri Lanka's number one foreign income, he said. Now uh, things are getting better and better and uh, there's no uh, fuel queues anymore and the gas issue is uh, sorted. Um, and now uh, the government is slowly getting everything into uh, the right place. So this is why the, the time has come uh, to promote tourism now. This is uh, uh, Sri Lanka number one uh, foreign income. Sri Lanka's economic crisis is a result of several factors, including COVID-19 pandemic, which battered its tourism-reliant economy and slashed remittances from workers overseas, rising oil prices, populist tax cuts, and a seven-month ban on the import of chemical fertilizers last year that devastated agriculture. And in news from Nepal, Nepalese mountaineer Sanu Sherpa, who has set an unbeatable record by climbing the 14 highest peaks in the world twice, received a heroic welcome when he arrived back home over the weekend. Take a look. Nepali climber Sanu Sherpa received a roaring welcome upon his arrival to Kathmandu on Saturday after setting a climbing record by scaling all the world's 14 peak, 8 in Nepal, 5 in Pakistan and 1 in China twice that are higher than 8,000 meters, that is 26,247 feet for a second time. 48-year-old Sherpa was welcomed with traditional dance, songs and colorful scarves after reaching the Tribhuvan International Airport. Saru Sherpa from Sankuswaba district in East Nepal reached the top of Pakistan's Geshabram 2, which at 8,035 meters is the 13th highest on July 21, his pioneer adventure hiking company said in Kathmandu. Eight of the 14 highest peaks, including Mount Everest, are in Nepal. The other six are in Pakistan and the Tibet region of China. Shepas are known for their mountaineering skills and guide expeditions and track to Everest for visiting climbers. They perform religious rites asking for forgiveness for setting foot on its peak every year. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Thank you.